It's my pleasure to announce our first speaker for today. She is Ayla Omeragic uh, from Symfony, uh, currently working as a service delivery manager with experience in roles focused on client success and growth, uh, holding positions that require constant listening, questioning, and researching, and creating strategies ultimately led her to the world of product management. I will now lead the Agile team focused on delivering high quality products across the different industries. Uh, welcome, Ayla. Uh, thank you, Maria, and good morning, everyone, again, uh, now in English. Um, thank you again for the intro, and um, I would just like to say that it's, it, it's my pleasure to be here today at Roadmaps Conference when I first started in product management. Anna was kind of there and, and Serbian community that um, allowed me to start speaking uh, in that crazy time in 2020 when we were all online. So it, it was really nice to kind of feel as a part of a product community. So I hope that you all enjoy today uh, during, the, during the conference. Uh, there's a lot of great sessions. So let's not waste any more time. I'll just start uh, sharing my screen now and we can uh, get started. Okay. So um, today I wanted to share some thoughts about how communication and storytelling is a key soft skill that every product manager should develop to be successful. Good stories do more than just create a sense of connection. They build trust and they allow the listener to uh, enter the story where they're making them more open to learning. Good stories can contain multiple meanings. So they're kind of surprisingly economical in conveying complex ideas in these graspable ways. And stories are definitely far more engaging than just dry um, recitations of data points or discussion of abstract ideas. So as humans, we've been telling stories since the beginning of time, but something is changing though. In the last few decades, our generation has been more and more imposed to statistics and data, but very few people obviously have brains that are able to retain all that information at once. Everyone can definitely remember stories much, much better than they can remember numbers. And I also have some scientific facts to back me up there. So um, organizational psychologists, uh, Peg N, uh, found that learning which stems from a well-told story is remembered more accurately and for far longer than learning that is derived from facts and figures. So uh, as well as the cognitive psychologist, uh, Jerome Brunner, who had a research in which he suggests that the facts are 22 times more likely to be remembered if they are part of a story. And why? because stories are memorable. Stories help us grab the gist of an idea quickly and they trigger our emotions. So injecting hard numbers into our stories will definitely raise the stakes and bring our call to action into much clearer focus. So bottom line is that the combination of data and story satisfies both our left and right side of the brain. And this is what invites our audience to act. So how does this translate in product management, especially when we think about successful product managers as being data-driven? Thankfully, being data-driven and being a great storyteller are definitely not mutually exclusive. So depending on who we're addressing and what phase of the product life cycle we're in, we need to kind of take a step back and tailor our presentation to our audience. So generally speaking, even if your presentation needs to have hard data, which it usually does, we should try to leave that to the end or try to leave that as closer to the end as possible. So for example, if I start my presentation um, looking at this graph here and saying, 
Um, I looked at last week's data and I saw a bounce rate of 57%. Our page load is seven seconds, et cetera. Most of our audience won't remember these numbers after, uh, after the presentation, but they will remember that idea that we have page load problems and we have bounce rate problems on our site. So our brains are definitely wired to forget the information that's required too much effort to process. Instead, we should always try to tell a story to our audience. And this may seem a bit random, but because of this randomness, our audience will be captivated and actually start paying attention. So as a product managers, we all know that a part of our job is to persuade our leadership, persuade our customers, persuade our stakeholders. And as I said earlier, facts and data alone are not always enough even to get their attention. So a good story helps with drawing their attention, but emotions are what persuades. So let me tell you a story. In 2006, a uh, New York Times journalist called Rob Walker set out to determine if storytelling was the most powerful story, tell, uh, was the most powerful tool of all. So he started this project where he collected around 200 thrift items of very low value. So the average cost of each item was around a dollar and 25 cents. He took care to really ensure that there was nothing particularly special about any of these items. As you can see, a uh, bin with bees, a plastic hot dog, a tile with number, wooden banana, things like that, you get the idea. So these items had no intrinsic value whatsoever. The next thing that he did is he telephoned 200 professional authors and he invited them to become part of his so-called significant object study. And he asked them if they would each write a story about one of the objects. They all said yes. He then auctioned those items on eBay with the stories added to their descriptions. So can you guess what happened? One of the items was a small plastic bust of a horse's head and Rob paid below a dollar for it. What did it sell for now that it had a great story attached to it? $63. So this was definitely not a one-off. In total, he spent $197 for 200 regular small thrift items, and he ended up selling them for almost $8,000, which is a markup of more than 6,300%. And all thanks to stories, which had transformed these otherwise basic objects into things of value. So how is it so easy for us to fall for stories? How could someone part with more than $60 for a secondhand plastic horse's head that's been bought for less than a dollar? And the simple answer is here that they play on our emotions. When we feel these emotions, we become less objective and critically observant. We become easily duped into buying and doing things that we might not do ordinarily. So this brilliant project that Rob Walker did is a great example of the enormous power that storytelling has. And it definitely highlights its importance as a skill that's worth developing on our side. So um, a few tips here. Um, when creating a story, we should choose a setting that everyone's familiar with. So if our audience, um, if our product is a product for teachers, we should set our story in a classroom so that our audience can clearly visualize the space in their mind. Also, we should make sure that we're highlighting feelings rather than just outlining a sequence of events in a story. So through the story, our character probably goes through some feelings of anticipation, frustration, hope, relief, excitement, hopefully even delight at the end. So we shouldn't hesitate uh, to use those terms or whatever terms are relevant to our story. 
we want our story to stick. The audience needs to remember the story, but also needs to remember the feelings that they had while they were listening to us. So they should still think about what you told them long after you told them. And the more emphasis that we put on feelings, the more the story will stick and the more the audience will identify with you. So it means that the higher the chance is that they'll give you what you need for them, you know, depending on who we're talking to, whether it's funding, approval, their help in making the product successful. So when you Google, storytelling techniques. There are tons of templates and guides, but today I do want to share something that's proven, that works, and books have been written about this, and it's easy to follow and remember and will definitely help you simplify your messaging. So by now we know that in storytelling, we create empathy. Whatever character we build, we create empathy for that character. So how to do that? Is there a formula? Any memorable story is built on this simple framework. So here's nearly every story you see or hear in a nutshell. We have a character, a hero, who has a problem. And at the peak of their despair, a guide steps into their lives and gives them a plan, calls them to action. We understand that the failure would be devastating, but the guide navigates the hero to success. So if you now start remembering any blockbuster movie or a book that you've read, this is a very familiar framework. So what, this, what does this mean? We don't want to be telling our story. We want to invite the end user into the story. Our product is not a hero in this case. End user is a hero. Or in our case, you know, depending on the audience or any relevant stakeholder, they should feel like the hero. But for the purposes of this talk today, let's stick uh, with the end user being a hero. So our role is to guide this hero successfully through the challenges. Um, there's an analogy that says um, our product should be uh, considered a Yoda to Luke Skywalker. And in this case, end user is Luke Skywalker. So it comes down to basically the thing that every human being wants to be invited into a story. So this framework was developed by Donald Miller and uh, it's been analyzed, it's been uh, talked about, books have been written and it's been used mostly by marketing professionals when it first came out but it applies so well in product management, regardless of whether we're talking to our internal teams or we're trying to position our product to the market, it works. And it's beautiful, beautiful because it's valid for any product. It can be an app, a website, a hardware product. So let's dig a bit deeper into this. So a character. When we identify something our user wants, and we communicate it simply. The story that we're inviting them into is given definition and direction. We remember best th those stories that have a hero. So you, you really can't tell a good story without one. So the same is true for our product story. We just need to make sure that the hero is our end user. And if we focus well on people's needs, they'll keep, they'll keep coming back to us. And that's because your story has a power to make them think, think of you while they're hearing it and then think of your product in real life. And to keep people interested, we should set their problems and their pain points as the villain. It doesn't matter if it's a simple process that needs fixing or something extravagant, your users need their problems solved. And the villain is the number one device that the storytellers use to give conflict a clear point of focus. The villain obviously doesn't have to be a person. The villain needs to be, however, a root source, something that's relatable, something that's singular, something that's real. So what is the chief source of conflict that your product or your service defeats? Talk about this villain. The more you talk about the villain, the more people will want a tool to help them defeat that villain. 
And external problems that we solve are causing frustrations in people's lives. We know that. And just like in the story, it's those frustrations that are motivating them to use a certain product. If we can identify that frustration, put it into words, and offer to resolve it along with the original external problem, something special happens. And we bond with our users because we positions our, positioned ourselves more deeply into this narrative of theirs. When we feel understood, it's like a psychological air that wants us to make, wants us to listen more to whoever is expressing that awareness of how we feel. And that's what our users get when you know their struggles and can express that. Now this part, and needs a guide. We should always position our users as the hero and our product as the guide. So when looking for a guide, a hero trusts somebody who knows what they're doing. This guide doesn't have to be perfect, but the guide needs to have serious experience helping other heroes win the day. Uh, there is something that's called a prospect theory. And it says that uh, people are more likely to be dissatisfied with a loss than they are satisfied with a gain. And according to Daniel Kahneman, in certain situations, people are two to three times more motivated to make a change to avoid a loss than they are to achieve a gain. So we should really focus on giving our users a vision of the transformation that they will accomplish by using our product. Stories get exciting only when a problem comes up and threatens the chances of a happy ending. Nobody wants their story to have a grim ending. And that's why it's best to identify this happily ever after state that they can get once your product help them, helps them defeat the villains. So by now, it's kind of possible that you're thinking, you know, this is great for me, uh, but uh, it's more so when I'm launching a new product or I'm in some sort of customer conference type of setting. But how can I start applying some of these concepts in my daily job? The thing is that uh, storytelling is a critical skill to each product manager's success. So as product managers, we advocate for customers and we help our organization understand why we're focusing suddenly on this one particular problem instead of a hundred other problems and features requests that we may have. It also helps us to earn trust with leadership and stakeholders and obviously accelerates the adoption for our end user. And the reality is that the large majority of product managers don't do much public speaking, but the stories are actually a great tool for internal presentations as well. So in my experience, a great opportunity for storytelling is a kickoff meeting for a new initiative. You know, you may find yourself in a conference room or a Zoom call with a handful of colleagues from either engineering, design, often external stakeholders and clients. And a great way to motivate them or get them excited is to start telling them a story related to what we're about to build. After that meeting, you can refer to that story throughout the development process. And if the story was well-crafted, everyone will remember it vividly and they'll bring it up to you by the, every time you know, they have questions, even several months after that kickoff meeting. And you know, I'm sure that many of us who work as product managers, project managers, any other similar role have had a challenge you know, when your team just lacks motivation, lacks creativity, and that's a drive to develop and make and deliver something really great. And naturally, you know, we are always trying to stay ahead, bring that additional value, present something really great to the client. So I was working as a product manager for an app that was actually a community building platform that helps older and homebound adults to connect and engage with each other through video and virtual classes. 
So our end user was 65 plus years old. And we were kind of just starting with this new project and we had our MVP requirements, you know, a set of features. By this date, we should enable virtual classes to be held and have a listing of them on the homepage. Okay, that was simple enough. But um, I knew how challenging this would be because we're talking about a senior user and we need to make this product super easy and available to them. So it's more than just a set of requirements. It always is. So I created a story. The main character of my story was a grandma named Kata. And my audience was my dev team. So Kata was 75. She lived alone. She's full of life though. She always had many friends, used to go on walks to her local market and around the neighborhood regularly. But as time went by, walking was becoming more harder until eventually she started to spend her days at home watching TV. Her personality didn't change. She was still this young spirited grandma, but now because of her physical health, she was tied to her home. She had a handful of friends that she called, but what does that mean when you cannot expand your friend group, you have nothing new to talk about, you're not meeting new people? Did her life really have to stop? So if you're physically bound to home and you're older, is that really that for you? Does it come down to watching TV and reading that certificates daily in the newspapers? So long story short, I made my user a human being by giving them a name, a face, and by telling a story that everyone can relate to. Everyone remembers what we built for Kata, even those that weren't working on this project in particular. So I created empathy and we were motivated. We wanted to create this super simple, easy to use app. We were focusing on user experience and we all had a common goal. We wanted to enable people like our grandmas and grandpas because we were able to connect those that are no longer physically active to have new friends and learn new things. So if you, if you remember anything from today's talk, uh, from this session, let it be this. Uh, people remember stories, not data. Stories provide context, relevance, and they engage in a way that data cannot. Emotions are key to success. Try to create that spark and empathy with your audience and see how things change. And definitely stories are not just for our end users. As product managers or any similar role that we're working in, we are heroes of many different stories, but as product managers, let's make storytelling our superpower. We can be great with data and numbers, but when we're communicating, we're all people and we will always send that report. We will always have data to back our stories. But you know, whether we're talking to engineers or our managers or our clients, we're still talking to people, human to human, and just telling a story. So that's it for me for today, at least. Thank you very much for this really, really great story and presentation. Um, uh, you can, um, all of you can ask question in the chat and in the middle time, I will share the screen um, and uh, kindly ask you to uh, give uh, feedback to Isla, just a second. You can go to the um, to the website uh, menti.com and uh, to put uh, this code
thank you very much. I will, uh, we will go to the next slide. I think we have one question. I'm not sure, Mario, if you want to do this now or. Uh, I just want to ask them to uh, put the answer to um, the second slide of survey and then we can switch uh, okay. to the question. We have uh, one question. Um, how do you know your story will resonate with people? The fact my story sounds good to me doesn't mean it will hit the nerve with the others. You are also all invited to unmute or discuss with the speaker. Um, thank you for the question. Um, it really comes down to knowing your audience. And in the example of this very familiar framework that we talked about, um, it's something that's perfect in a setting when we are talking to the end user directly, uh, because the end user is then the hero of your story. And obviously you're crafting the whole story um, for them and that's easy. But I know that in our work, we're usually talking to either our internal teams, you know, our our dev teams, our design teams, where we are talking to the clients and other external stakeholders. So really, we really do need to create that empathy for the end user, which is, you know, in case of clients, really easy because they obviously care about their product and the, what they want their end user to be the hero of the story. So I, in my experience, focusing on the end user of the product and making them the hero uh, is kind of something that uh, doesn't miss, whether we're talking with our clients or internal teams. And in, in my experience uh, that I just talked about where we had this product that was really specific, geared towards senior audience, I knew that I could resonate with my team because we were, you know, we all talked about and mentioned our grandmas and our grandpas, and we kind of put their, they, them into into the focus and made them the hero so i would say focusing on the end user of your product making them a hero of the story is uh, a good way to to start and ensure your story will be successful 